Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church. Changing lives, transforming nations. Actually, um, so yesterday we were, we had this in mind that uh, to share some testimonies about Revaya, what we are doing and how it's affecting their life. Uh, how we are impacting their life and stuff. So when I uh, ask them in front of everybody, hey, how has Revive helped? Uh, nobody really said anything. Yeah, most of them said that we are more like family, friends, and it's helping them to have that community. Uh, when they go out of here, they don't have that community to build them up, to cry with them, to pray with them, and all that. I was good. Uh, I mean, th I thought that was good. But then I was expecting something else, something different. So... Um, and I was questioning myself, hey, haven't I done anything uh, for them? Um, haven't I invested my time and everything? But uh, it hasn't done anything in their life. So uh, I went home and I dropped some texts to some some of the guys and girls I know that I have personally invested. And then they were like, I just didn't want to tell in front of everybody. So it's, it's not that... Um, yeah, there were only two of them who, uh, who shared um, what Revaya is doing uh, in their life. But then there are so many others who, who, want, who, has, uh, impacted, who has been impacted and who, um, who is a bit shy to share all that. So, um, yeah, um, it's been great to know that, uh, that God is able to use me um, to do... Uh, what he wants to do through me. Um, so yeah, uh, by saying this, I want to share my testimony. And yes, uh, so we have uh, Jason join us <laughs> all the way from India. Can we all give a round of applause for him? He really badly wanted to be here, but then uh, he's joining us through WhatsApp. So yes, we love you, Jason. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I want to share my testimony. Pastor, Pastor Julian only gave me 10 minutes, and I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I promise I'll stick to that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, growing up, uh, when I was, most of y'all know my story. When I was four years old, my uh, father left our family. And uh, when I was 11 or 12, uh, my mother passed away. But um, as soon as uh, after some time, our father left us. My uh, mother couldn't afford four of us to stay at home. Uh, she couldn't afford to take care of uh, uh, four of us. So she had to send the two girls uh, out. So uh, I was out most of the time. And one year before she passed away, only I came back home to stay with my mother. And uh, so I know how it is to uh, stay in an unknown uh, place. And... Uh, like you feel very um, weird because um, they're not your family and if something happens, something wrong happens at home and uh, uh, it used to be the outsiders, the visitors who get like pulled up and um, we never had anything called respect and uh, we didn't have parents like to stand up and speak up for us and uh, to tell us, hey, it's going to be okay. Like I don't, I don't really worry about the finances, it's not that. But then, like, somebody to stand with you and say, hey, I'm with you. Uh, we'll get through this together. So, uh, but then, when I go to school, nobody really knew that I didn't have parents unless it's, it's teacher's parents meeting and then your parents never show up. And then they always had this question, hey, why, why aren't your parents showing up? And I remember just one for one parents meeting and that was also accidentally my grandmother came to see me because she didn't see me after a long time and then that was the only time a parent or a or somebody of my own showed up uh, for my uh, parents or uh, parents teachers meeting so uh, I know how it is to feel lonely I know how it is to have fights battles on my own and then still have that happy happy smiley face in front of everybody so um, I was a pre-teenager uh, and uh, I was I was smiling I was having all this pain in me but then I never even shared it with my own siblings um, 
so i know how it is to have that struggle how we, how it is to have that battle uh, you must be wondering how does this your story relate to this i want to say that all these teenagers that you see they have beautiful smile on their faces they 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 show like they have all together but trust me they have their own battles trust me they go through their own emotional battles they have fam family problems they have different different child uh, different different teenagers have different different battles that they are fighting on their own but then i'm so glad i'm so glad that i came to overcomers i'm so glad that i got my leaders who fought for me not not just correcting me but then who stood up with me and said hey you got this you can do this and even when i said even when i denied to be the leader that i that i am right now in front of y'all they they fought for me and said hey no you are not going to stop your fears you are not going to stop your past you are not going to let your past stop you from being the leader that you have uh, that god has called you to be and every time i question every time i doubt every time i ask ask and ask them and say hey do you do you really think that i can be the leader do you really think that god can use me and their their answer is always yes, yes. <laughs> like right like right now and um, hey they were my modakais they were my mosesers who encouraged who encouraged joshua they were my modakais who en who encouraged the esther in me and uh, they were my uh, barnabases who who encouraged the paul in me and uh, how many pauls do you see how many esthers do you see in day to day life at work your neighbors and even your relatives that you know that uh, i have a teenage uh, teenager at home and they 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 are always addicted to something music games but they are struggling and they are going through more than just that we only see the outward appearance we only see them struggling with their identity we only see them struggling with their uh, with their attitude issues we only see them having anger issues but then deep down they have so much more going inside and are you willing to stand up as the as the moses as yeah. the mordecai as the barnabas and say hey i am willing to fight for you i am willing to pray through this with you i am not going to let you down if the, if my if when i doubted if they said hey i don't trust you hey yeah i don't think you are not capable enough i wouldn't be standing here i wouldn't be impacting these lives i wouldn't be speaking into these lives because i understand when they say hey i feel lonely i understand when they say i don't have finances i understand when they say my parents are not with me and standing up with me are you willing to be that barnabas are you willing to be that mordecai and say hey no matter what you are going through i am with you i'm standing for you till you reach your destiny till you reach the god put god given destiny that he has placed for you are you going to be that and imagine after 5 or 6 years down the line when they look back they are able to say i'm so glad i'm so glad that auntie jan stood up with me i'm so glad that she prayed through this journey with me i'm so glad that aunt salome i'm so glad that juliet aki i'm so glad that they stood with me because if i am in this god given destiny it's because of their prayers it's because they fought for me it's because they encouraged me and they walked this journey through with me so i'm i'm, I'm really honored i'm really um uh, i want to thank each and every person who is encouraging your teenagers encouraging them not to give up like eren said pushing them to come to church pushing them to go to go to god instead of go to other things um and i i so want to encourage you be that mordecai be that moses be that barnabas who say hey i trust you and i want to walk this journey with you and uh, yes it's god uh, it's god's grace and it's god who led me here but then god always has a plan and that plan is man so yeah so it's you uh, that the god has planned the plan that god has so yeah that's it <laughs> yeah so over to dinner wow uh, she took the words right out of my mouth but uh, um okay so pastor julian sent us a text and he wanted us to speak on um why uh, 
why I, why I personally have a burden for the teens and what I want to see is different. And when he said that, uh, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I know I have a burden for the teens, but I was thinking, you know, what what was the burden for and why? So, but then, okay, before I get into that, I want to start off by saying uh, I came up from a Christian background. I've been born a Christian. I've been going to church. And one of the main reasons I am here today is because my grandma invested in me and uh, she actually uh, <laughs> she like she went behind like behind me reading the bible every day even though it was 10 verses i didn't want to read she forced me to read at least 10 verses a day uh, one psalm 10 verses and i remember that we had to pray the lord's prayer every single day but even though i was born in a christian home uh, i didn't know the lord like i know him now for me god was this big humongous person with a beard up there <laughs> but uh, I, that was the image I had of him but I didn't know I didn't know okay God loves me this much and all of that so I tended to get into a lot of trouble in school not like my other friends but I tended to get in trouble as in uh, you know skip classes get scolded for not doing my homework hiding my book under the bed and all of that and then I got caught to mama also once, once or twice <laughs> but yeah it was hard and then uh, thanks to Bevan, I came to Overcomers Church and uh, I, I went for HMG and I remember that uh, they prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I kid you not, I was trying my best. I couldn't. Auntie Chula was there telling me, you know, just say this word, say this word, say this word. And I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> and then I remember Lily, Rema, and all the little kids, they were just holding my legs and starting to pray for me. I was like, what are you trying to do to me? And all of that, it was like, it was really bad. And uh, so back then I went home in 2017 and then I didn't actually know God then. But then in 2019, it was um, Rise Up, Camp Rise Up, yeah. Uh, that was when I actually gave my life to Christ. Uh, I had been through uh, a tricky situation. And <laughs> Pastor Julian knows, no one has to know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's when I gave my life to Christ. And um, so yeah, that being said, the change, why I want change in the world is because if we don't be the change that they see, they're going to see it from somewhere else. The world is a bad place at this point. Uh, you have drag shows in USA, you have uh, the pride flag being waved everywhere, even in hotels, even in schools. Uh, and for me, I am fully against the pride movement. Uh, I have like a full, full on um, negative impact about it. Uh, but yeah, so if we, if we have a world pushing agendas about pride, by the way, pride, for those who support pride, I think pride is from Satan because he had pride first and look where that got him. But uh, humility is from Christ, so love and humility is from Christ. So if we don't push our teens to be, be to go towards Christ, we're going to push them towards pride, and that's going to take them to Satan. So I think that's why we needed um, that. I took on the challenge, okay, that I'm going to be here for the teens and uh, support Christine and Hudson. Um, but yeah, so going going to my first point and my second point. The reason I have a burden for these teens is because two people, specifically two people, had a burden for me when I was going through a lot, when I was um, when I was messing up. There were two people who came. One is on my left side, one is on my right side. Charles Nakim, Pastor Julian. Uh, without them, <laughs> man, I don't know where I would have been. At least, at least I would have been. I mean, I don't. I'm not into drugs and all of that kind of thing. But I would have been in a gaming arcade somewhere, somewhere else, not in church today. So I want. I want to give all the glory to God and I want to thank them for being there for me. Uh, that being said, that is why I have a burden for this generation. And um, yeah, so changing the generation is one of the burdens I have. And I want each and every teen here and out there to follow Christ the way we follow him now. Because if they don't follow Christ, they're going to follow something else. That being said, I want to pass the mic to Pastor Julian. Baby, let, let me hype you up a bit. The man. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the man who said yes to all my screw ups, but stuck by me through through it all. Uh, my brother, my friend, my father, and my pastor, Pastor Julian. Wow, I'm emotional.
emotional now. I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know what to say. You know, like each and every one of them said, somebody chose to fight for my life that is why i stood here to stand for another generation and it is all it's always about us fighting for the lives of our young people the world has a agenda for our children the world has an agenda to destroy our children and if you and i keep silent about it and if we keep thinking oh, god will come and do something that is where we got it wrong like christian said <laughs> God has a plan and that plan is you and me and we need to fight for this generation we need to fight for our children we need to fight for our unborn children the world is getting more and more wicked the world is getting more and more selfish and as the church if you and i don't rise up who is going to rise up who is going to fight for them it is nice for us to see them and say oh how cute how sweet 16 year olds leading the main congregation in worship boy who couldn't speak any english coming and sharing it in offering and speak so bold children who are broken come to share in their testimony it's very nice sweet stories for all of us to hear very sweet but sweetness is not going to change their lives you got to fight for their destinies I don't know what what's on my slide just put the next slide <laughs> train up your child in the way they should go and when he is old he will not depart from it see parents you and I we have a big responsibility proverbs 22 verse 6 proverbs are written by whom by Solomon some people it's not a trick question <laughs> it was not a trick question okay this was the wisest man that walked on the face of the earth wrote all these proverbs and he wrote train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it see it is important see the world tells us and i'm not against psychology and i'm not against child psychology and all these things i'm i'm all for it uh my wife is a teacher she's she had to study all that stuff and yes we agree but he also writes you know what <laughs> paul knows where i'm going spare the rod and spoil the child very simple train up a child in the way he should go and he will not depart from it when he is old not when he is young when he is old there are people there are kids who grow up nice and sweet and all those stuff when they get married man they become demons or right, they abuse their wives they beat up their wives they or they or they get abu- they're abusive with drugs and they they're crazy they're nuts they they're gone wacko and sometimes the parents are wondering what happened to my kid 
because you didn't train them up when they needed to be trained up because it's not going to show because when they're 10 12 15 16 man you can you know they'll they'll look really nice but when they get older is when character starts to mature character starts to come out and when that character starts coming out what comes out is what's been installed deep inside and we as a church as pastors as leaders we have your children for 2 hours a week sometimes if they don't come to church you know we have them like 2 hours a month and uh, we are not magicians when your kids come we don't do abracadabra make them holy there is no magic spell to make your children holy because they come to church there is no magic spell if there is a magic spell in the bible please let us know it will make our lives much easier <laughs> but there is no magic spell you have a responsibility to train up your kids in your home what is the example that you are setting for your kids at home do you pray at home as a family do you pray do your kids see you praying or do you say hey take your bible and read your bible and pray when you don't you have not no relationship with god do you ex, do you set such a high standard for your kids and you have such a low standard with your own life and with your walk with the lord be the example you want your kids to live Sh- lead your children by example not just by words you have the opportunity to do that 24/7 in and in your houses do you know what your kids go through do you know what your kids face or are we acting in this world like oh, my kid is so good he's so sweet she's so sweet she's so you know i don't think any of these things you know the world is wicked i just have a few photos of few things to show but you know are you aware of what your children are faced with your children are faced with a devil that is out to take their destiny they are fighting every day to do what's right they are fighting every day to do what's right and there will come a day when they don't have the strength when they don't have what it takes that they will give in but will you be there to pick them up or will they have the strength to pick themselves up don't you know when say church we got a responsibility it's not a small responsibility all right yeah you can show some of those pictures jangama duragatine noddun nisa dedaru da daruveku siya divi nasa gani that's other there and that has to be true is there i don't like other there na for, for whatever reason that's a personal note ah huh? but i i took that photo because they are good with gossip okay no no nothing personal la nothing personal <laughs> just to break the ice i said that okay all right drugs alcohol your kids are faced with these challenges in their face every day you think your there's the schools they go to is a safe place the schools are the worst place the easiest place that they have access to drugs you think you give your phone to a kid and you know they are in a very safe place check your kids phones how many of your parents check your kids phones oh no it's it's their it's their privacy uh huh their privacy will kill them their privacy will destroy them you know some of our young people when i when i walk by their phones they get nervous they get nervous they have a password to open the phone they have a password for whatsapp they have a password for instagram they have a password for facebook 
they have password for tiktok they have password for i'm like dude i have a one password for everything like with the greatest difficulty i remember that one password how do you remember so many passwords and what is so special that you have so many passwords to hide in there if you got something to hide that means it's not something right ding and i'm like if you, don't be fooled parents you got to be responsible adults you got to be responsible and you might not be a mom you might not be a dad but you might be an uncle and auntie you still have a responsibility don't be afraid to correct your kids it's important they want it they might act like they don't want it but they want it cuz that's when they know you care enough for them to tell them the truth sometimes parents think you know what ah oh, if i tell them or oh, you know if i correct them they'll get offensive no the world tells them how to live their lives the world tells them what they need to get how they need to even dress wear their clothes how short it needs to be how exposing and revealing their clothes need to be to look sexy and then we in the church as parents as christians we are so nervous and scared to talk to our children about it set high standards because the world sets a very high standard for sin and your children and our young people are pushed to achieve that standard and when they can't achieve that standard they go commit suicide why because they can't keep up to it they don't need to keep up to it they need to stand against it and they need to be trained taught encouraged nurtured given the tools that they need to stand against it you can take this off so church is a safe place for your kids i just want to let you know in case you're wondering raise your children on a christ centered foundation don't let them be raised on any other foundation not on a foundation of tiktok foundation of instagram how many likes how many hearts how many views on tiktok how many followers on instagram or tiktok don't let that be their foundation let their foundation be christ centered let them learn to love the lord their god with all their heart with all their might with all their strength sometimes you got to say hard things to your kids because you love them sometimes you got to put your kids in the right place you got to deprive them of some things because you love them not because you hate them some people hate us when we correct them too bad i love you enough to for you to hate me i love you more than what you can ever hate me shali knows exactly what i'm saying and being a youth pastor i'm telling you it's one of the hardest things because you see young people grow and then you see them make some bad choices and walk so much away from god it's heartbreaking there are nights that i have cried i have not even cried for my daughter and my wife so much that i have cried for my young people because of what i've seen and what i've heard and what i see them doing with their lives and i pray that god will change them why because we need to fight for them if you and i don't fight for this generation the devil is fighting for their destiny 
And we have a responsibility, church. We have a big responsibility. And yes, like Pastor Mitch said, we want to build generations. We don't want to just build a church. We want to build a church that is young and strong, that young people are stronger in the Lord, than we, that young people will grow up and do greater things than we can ever, ever imagine. Things that we dreamt, things that we, things that we only saw in our dreams, that we will see our young people achieve, that our children achieve those things in reality. You know, sometimes it's difficult to let go. And it's difficult when it is our own. But God has not called us to let go or give up. God has called us to fight. If we choose to let go, you and I, none of us will be seated here. But he fought for our destiny. He paid the greatest price for our destiny. And if we are to fight for this generation, church, we have a price to pay. We have a fight to fight. And we have a battle to win. And I hope and pray that you are all on this battle to see a generation won for the kingdom of God. Do I have another slide? I think I do. That's it. That's it. So yeah. We heard how lives have been changed, how lives have been transformed. We heard the impact of God in their lives. But I just want to encourage you. Keep fighting for the destiny of your children. Keep praying. Be parents that pray. You know, like Dylan said, his grandma used to pray. Force them to pray. Force them to read the Bible. When Paul spoke to Timothy, he said, the anointing that was upon your grandmother, that was upon your mother, and now upon you. So even the anointing of God is passed down through generations. And what you carry, your children will carry. And what your children carry, your grandchildren will carry. What your grandchildren carry, your great-grandchildren will carry. And it will carry on. But if that's if you pass them the blessing, even if you pass them the curse, the curse will be carried on. And me and my wife, we made a decision that the curse in our family ends from us. It's not going any further from us. It's not moving any further from us. It's not going to our daughter. It's not going to our unborn son. It's not going any further. But it stops from me. And no matter what mess you have been in your life, no matter what mess you have gone through in your life, you can make a decision that it stops with you. You can't do nothing about the past, but you can do everything about the future. You can do everything about tomorrow. There's nothing you can do about the past. There's nothing. You only feel sorry for yourself every time you look at the past. And feeling sorry for yourself is not going to take you anywhere in your life. Now this is for the whole church. Feeling, looking back, is not going to take you anywhere in life. But what you make a decision now is going to change your tomorrow. And we need to make some decisions now about tomorrow. Don't let your past determine your future. Let your now determine your future. The decisions you make now is going to shape your future. So church... What we're going to do right now is we're going to have all our young people come up here. We're going to pray for them. Everybody the age of 13 and above? 13 to 25. 
13 and above then all of you are supposed to come up here <laughs> you like that no <laughs> all the young at heart house again woo like yeah that's what i'm talking all right uh 13 to 25 i'm sorry to burst your bubble <laughs> All right, everybody, 13 to 25, if you are between the age of 13 to 25, we want you to come up here. We want to pray. We want to bless you. And we want to, as a church, we want to say that we are standing with you for you to walk into the destiny and the purpose of God for your life. And as a church, you are going to say, hey, we are with you. We are standing with you. And we will fight for your destiny. Not just today, but till forever. All right, guys. Yeah, yeah. You guys can come. Yes, yes. Can we give a round of applause for all our young people in the house? Man, so good. <laughs> Richard forgot his age. <laughs> all right. Nilanga is 25. Whoa. <laughs> That's okay, Nilanga. We can pray, man. Just kidding. All right, guys. You guys can... Come, 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 come. Senu, can you go? That's a little sweetie. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll just make one line. Yeah? Oh, no, two lines is okay, all right. Don't make three lines, make two lines. That makes it. All right, the boys on this side. This is the Corinthian church. The boys on this side, the girls on this side. I'm just, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, can we all stand as a church and bless our, our children? All right, these are all our children, right? It says, the, the, the old proverb says, it takes a village to raise a child all right and it takes a church to raise a child in the ways of god amen all right so let's all pray and bless our children pastor mitch you want to yeah i want you to uh, i want to encourage uh, people now you are, if i start praying you will just be looking at me or yawning or, so it's better that uh, i want to encourage people on the seats over there would you come and join can you take a step forward a little bit yeah we want the church to come yeah, just uh, can you join here and pray with us? Can we do that? Because we believe. Now today you might be wondering, are you a parade church? Some of you are thinking like that because not. See, don't be selfish. It's not about you. It's about generations. It's about the kingdom of God. Amen. So yes, come on. Wow, wow, great, great. Yeah, come join, come join, come join. Lay hands on somebody, you know, take, you know, yeah, join, join us, you know, find somebody you can also join, yeah, Udita, Ramita, yeah, 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 okay, can we do that, you know, join here, join here, join here, join here, yeah, yeah, come, yeah, give some room, you can join, hold, you know, maybe it's not your favorite person, it's okay, just, uh, here inside also you can come, um, uh, I forgot the name, uh, Pass, yeah, 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 come, yeah, Jerry, yeah, come forward, yeah, Okay. Ranil, uh, yeah. There are some kids in the front as well. Yeah, okay. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Tush. Shark. Okay, let's pray. Let's start praying. Let's all pray. Let's all pray for these guys. Let's all pray, you know, as a church. Let's all pray. Come forward. Find somebody. Stretch your hand. Pray. Can we all do that? You know, we, we all do that. You know, all pray for them, you know. Declaring prosperity, breakthrough, blessing, covering, protection. Can we all pray? You know, raise up our eyes. Now, if you are unable to find a person, just stretch your hand. Begin to pray. Begin to declare the power, the presence, the anointing of God. Begin to declare that destiny will be unlocked. Begin to declare that every work of the enemy over their life will be broken. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know how to pray, pray in the spirit. Katamarokotobo. Prophesy over them. Declare over them. Hallelujah. Let every work of the enemy break. Break break in the name of Jesus. Come on church, lift up your voice. Pray in the spirit. This is our effort. This is our fight. We fight on our knees. We fight with our prayers. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. For the pulling down of every stronghold. As we pray, as we prophesy, as we declare, right now things are shifting, moving, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, lift up your prayers. Come on, people. Lift up your prayers. Pray for them earnestly that they will go in the things of God. They will grow in the things of God. They will become the men and women God is calling them to be. 
Hallelujah. Let chains of addiction be broken. Chains of shame be broken. Chains of worthlessness be broken. Every chain of the enemy. This morning we declare it's breaking. We say a generation is arising. Even as a church, as we pray, a generation is arising. That will be a generation that is sold for God. Hallelujah. And generations will come forth. We raise our prayers this morning. We raise our prayers this morning. We raise our prayers this morning. As a church. As a family of God. And we declare that you are causing things to move and shift right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now bless them. Just say I bless you. Say blessing. Speak blessing. We reverse curses. Curse words over your life. Say I bless you. I bless you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Come on just declare. I bless you. We declare blessing. We declare, declare the blessing of God. Overtake every curse. Break every chain. Break every curse. Declare that right now. In the name of Jesus. Father we declare this morning. That every time related curse over this generation is broken. Over these young people are broken. Father we declare that every curse passed down from their mother's side. From their father's side. Is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare and decree as a church. In Jesus name. That these men and women will stand up. And become the Davids. Become the Esthers. Become the Nehemiahs. Become the Josiahs. Become that which... God is calling them to be. And we declare in the name of Jesus. That each one will fulfill the purpose of God. Not the enemy. You will fulfill the purpose of God. And Father right now we stand here. And if we have any family member, friend... Who has backslided. Even who have come to this church and backslided. We right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We call you back. In the name of Jesus. We call you back. In the name of Jesus. We call you back. In the name of Jesus. And we declare. That you will serve the Lord your God, the maker of heaven and earth. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Hey, we want to do one more thing. Two, three minutes. Uh, We want to pray over Christine and then also over Dylan and Hudson. Can you guys come soon? Christine is our pastoral leader for the teens. It's a very important age. That's why we established a teens ministry last year. Uh, Can you stretch your hands right here? towards her and then we have supporting Hudson and Dylan Dylan is here right there here there there he comes runs let's give a round of applause for these guys <laughs> hallelujah can you stretch your hand one more time pastor Julian is going to lead us as we pray yeah, let's all pray in the spirit. Father, we release a, a fresh anointing, a fresh fire right now, a fire to shoot up, uh, Lord, in the spirit right now. Lord, as they fight for this generation, Lord, we pray for a greater burden in the name of Jesus. We say, let the fire of God rise up inside of them. Let the fire of God shoot up inside of them, oh God. Let the burden of the Father rise up in their hearts and in their spirits for this generation of God that they will not rest until they see a generation change until they see a generation transformed for your glory of God we say let the fresh anointing of God let a fresh fire of God fire 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 in the name of Jesus 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 we say fire right now we say consume them with your fire consume them with your passion consume them with your love consume them Lord with a heart for this generation Lord let their heart be broken for the broken oh God let their heart be lost for the lost oh God let they will see a generation change that they will see a generation transform for your glory that they will see, Lord, young men and women rise up to the destiny and the purpose of God in their lives. 
And Lord, we just bless them right now. We bless them, Lord. We bless them. We pray, Lord, that you just, Lord, give assurance in their hearts. Lord, every doubt be broken. Every lie be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every brokenness be mended right now. Every hurt be dealt with right now. Lord, and I pray, Lord, your peace to fill them. And more, more so, the love of the Father. We speak over them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come, on. Come on, somebody give a... Hey! Hallelujah! Father, now we declare and decree over every person in this room. This is a new season of open doors, open opportunities. So we prophesy as you go out, you will go with the favor of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the authority of God. And as you go forward, you will be the righteous are bold as lions. So we declare that a righteous boldness is coming over you. As you go out this week, you will have testimony victory and most of all you have the presence of God so may the Lord bless you keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you may the Lord be gracious unto you may he lift up his countenance and give you peace that no man can give in Jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. can we give a round of applause to the Lord <laughs> hallelujah praise you grow go glow overcomers church Changing lives, transforming nations.